fine. Morning. All good this morning? All good? Ready to go? Is it cool enough for you out there today? Well, it is warm out there. The only thing about when these people say we need rain, when it goes down, then it's going to go back up. And when it does, it gets a little warm out there. Good to see everybody this morning. Good to have you all with us. I was telling them I was up here Saturday morning when the youth were getting ready to go off to camp and we were out here in the parking lot and it was like ants. There was kids running everywhere. It was great. It was great to see them all out there. Their fun started before they ever left here because they were running everywhere out there. And then uh, when they got ready to go, they all broke for different vehicles and they were going here and there and you could tell a bunch of them would run up to one and it would fill up so they'd take off to the other one and it would fill up. And she ain't here this morning, so it ain't fun picking on her. But poor old Karis, he was the last one. And finally, there was a few of them rolled over and got in the truck with her. So I told her that Amy had been telling them how to drive it, so nobody wanted to ride with them. But they all, it was, it was amazing to see them all. If you've got Jessica on Facebook, if you've seen any of the live videos, it looks like they already having a big time down there in some of the videos. They already having a good time, so continue keeping all of them in your prayers. And, for the ones that drove down there and just got to drive back with these kids. From what I hear, going down there, they're hopped up and coming back, they get cranky. So just pray for the ones driving, coming back, also bringing them back. Good to have everybody with us here this morning. Before we get started, I, I, I read something this week, or heard, heard it, read it. I'm going to tell you all about it. It's a little joke. It's man and woman. Every year they go to the, to the state fair, there's a helicopter there, and the man wants to ride in the helicopter, but it costs $50 to ride it. So every year he asks his wife, and she says, baby, that's $50, it's $50. They didn't want to ride it. Finally they went, the guy he got, he was 85 years old. They went to the fair that year, and he told his wife, he said, honey, if I don't ride that helicopter this year, I'm 85 years old. I may never get to ride it. And she's telling him, but $50 is $50. They're kind of arguing. Well, finally, the helicopter pilot, he hears them. So he goes over there and he says, listen, I'll tell y'all what I'll do. I'll give y'all a ride, 30-minute ride, and if y'all can ride the whole 30 minutes without either one of you saying anything, then y'all don't owe me nothing. But if either one of you talk, then y'all got to pay the $50. So they agreed. They got the helicopter and the pilot went up and he's kind of laughing. He gets up off the ground and he starts doing all of his trick moves. And he's turning and twisting and doing all this stuff. Nobody ever says a word. He goes on for 30 minutes doing all these rolls and turns and all that. He come back and he landed and he said, well, he said, I want to tell you, I did everything I could. I turned sideways and everything trying to get y'all to say something and nobody ever said nothing. And the old man said, well, you know, whenever Margaret fell out up there the first turn he made, I started to say something, but $50 is $50. <laughs> Think about that. Y'all go me a word of prayer. Lord, as I come to you this morning, I just want to thank you for this beautiful day once again that you've given us. Lord, thank you for everyone that's come to your house this morning to hear your word. Lord, right now, I just want to put everything in the world out of the way and just open this service right up to you, Lord. I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just come in this morning and touch heart to heart this morning. Lord, I pray right now, just move me out of the way. Take me and just use me in your will. Father, I have nothing without you. There's no way I can do this without you. And I just pray that you just come in and Lord, most of all, I pray there's someone here today that don't know something will be said or something will bring to you. Close to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I got to thank you this week, and this message was laid on my heart, and I was thinking about it. I got to think that, you know, a lot of times we have people, they, they come to know Christ, they accept Christ in their life, they're new Christians, and a lot of times, we kind of leave them hanging there, and they're, they're wondering, and I've had, actually had people ask me, say, okay, I've given my heart to Christ, 
I've turned my life over to God. What's next? What's next? What comes after? And I've got to give my heart to the Lord. Now what's next? Well, what comes next is you start to build a relationship with God. you got to build a relationship with God. You don't just like get saved one day and, and start preaching or be a lay pastor or elder. you got to build that relationship with God. And a lot of times when you do, the people ask you, said, okay, well, how do I do that? Well, just like any relationship, if you'll think back, if you're married or you got a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, I recall, and I, I use myself a lot of times in these scenarios when me and Stephanie first met. When you first meet, you got to build that relationship. You don't meet one day and get married the next. Or get meet one day, well, most people. And then, you know, the next day know each other. you got to build that relationship. And it starts with communication. If you'll think back, when you first met your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, well, the first thing you do, you communicate. You talk with one another. You get to know each other. You get to know what she likes and what he likes. The little things that make them mad, the little things that don't. you get, you got to have this relationship first. You talk, you communicate. Well, to build a relationship with God, we talk to Him with prayer. Praying, talking to God. And it didn't dawn on me, I've said it here before, because before we grow up, we don't realize that there are some people that don't know how to pray. They don't know what prayer is. When you tell them to pray, they're like, well, how? I've actually heard people, how do I pray? What do I do? What do I say? So the question is, what is prayer? Well, it's just talking with God. Just like when you started building that relationship with your spouse or when you first came to Cross Brand. If you're here, you've been coming a while, you're a member of a team or you're a team leader, but when you first got here, you didn't know anyone. So you start talking, you start talking, and you realize along the way that you have the same interests as other people. Everybody on our arena team, they got to talking and they realized, hey, this person enjoys competing, enjoys working in the arena, enjoys the cattle park, so that's where they'll fit in is arena. Or you get to talking to them and you realize, hey, these people, they, they, this person likes to cook, they enjoy cooking and dealing, they'll be good on something. But you got to communicate, and communicating as simple as that, it's just talking to God. Just having a communication with God. Well, what, how do I do that? Matthew in, in chapter 6 and verse 6, I'll tell you, you can write it down and go there, but God and His disciples has asked Jesus, how do we pray? What do we do? How do we pray? And Jesus tells them that when you pray, to go into a room, shut the door, and it goes into the Lord's prayer. If you don't know what to pray, Look in Matthew chapter 6 and he goes through the Lord's Prayer. It tells you what to say. You don't know how. But the main thing is you got to have that communication. And Jesus tells us in Matthew to go into a room, to get alone, get the world away from you. You've got to get in there. Don't, don't try to talk to God sitting in your living room with your TV on while you're playing on your computer, playing a video game or something. I mean, you can, but you, you don't get that. The best communication, if you think back when you meet someone, is just when you're alone, when it's just you and them. That's what God, that's what Jesus tells us. Get alone. Turn that TV off. Put that computer down. Get alone and just have you and God time. While you're riding down the road, turn your radio off. Get alone. Have your you and Jesus time. Start building that relationship. Talking to Jesus. Well, I don't really know what to say. Okay, what did you say when you met that friend? Just talk about what you're expecting in life. Talk about your goals, your plans. Talk to Jesus. If you've got something going on in your life, talk to Jesus. Talk to God just like you would your best friend. Just talk with Him just like you would your best friend. I've told people before, Jesus is one of the best therapists you can have. If you've ever seen or if you've been to a therapist or whatever, a lot of times you have to make an appointment. But with Jesus, you don't have to make an appointment. He's there always. He'll never leave you. He's there. All you got to do is approach Him. 
some of these therapists, I think, say to buy them 100 bucks an hour. It don't cost you anything to talk to God. All he wants you to do is have that relationship. Get in a quiet place where you can turn the world off and turn everything off and talk to God. And he'll reward you openly. In that Matthew 6 and 6, he tells us, your father sees in secret, he will reward you openly. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. A lot of times people ask you, why do, why do I need to pray? Why do I need to pray? All these things about prayer and building a relationship that come up. Colossians 4, 2 says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. When people ask you, if you've got a new Christian that come to you, and you tell them, you know, hey, start building your relationship with God. And they tell you, well, I really don't know how to pray. Talk to them. Tell them, hey, just get in a quiet place. Think about that relationship you build. Get along with God and start to talk to Him. The first thing you need to do when you start talking to Him is just start thanking Him. Start thanking Him for what He's done for you. Thank you, God, that you saved my soul from hell. Thank you, Lord, for coming into my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Lord, you was with me today. I had to travel all the way to Birmingham and back, and, you, and I made it back safely. Thank you, Lord. Start thanking Him for what He's done, and before you know it, you'll be talking to God just like your best friend. You'll be telling him, Lord, I, I, I need help with this situation. I've just turned my life over to you, but I'm having a hard time getting over this anger that I have in my heart. Just start talking to God. That's all he wants from you. That's all he wants you to do. Build that relationship and talk to him. You'd be surprised. Somebody that, that, that really has a hard time talking to other people. When you first meet someone, conversation starts and then it'll continue to go. Just start thanking God. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Start thanking God and the prayer comes. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the Word to speak the mystery of Christ. You start talking to God, tell Him it's okay. Tell him what your friends need. Tell him what your loved ones need. Because Myra had a praise report. They've been praying for her nephew. Tell God. Talk to God about these things. When you meet someone, you start building that relationship. You start telling them about your family. You start telling them about your mom, your brothers, your sisters. That's how they learn. When you're talking to God, building that relationship, tell him about these things. Yeah, he already knows. God knows. But He wants you to talk to Him about it. You know, there's things you knew about your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. There's things you knew, but you wanted them to talk with you about it. When me and Stephanie met, I knew she was in school. I knew she was going to UAH. We got to talk. I, excuse me. You get to talking about it, you learn different wants and needs and things and desires. Well, that's what God wants. You start talking to him, you start telling him and thanking him and telling him what you want. That's all he wants, that relationship. It'll start building, it'll start growing as you talk with him. You think back on your relationship with your spouse, the more you talk, the closer you got. You got to know more about him. You talk to God more, you get to know God more, and you'll grow closer to God. Because the more you talk to him, he's going to reveal things to you. Just like talking with that friend or whatever. As you talk to them, they get closer and they start to trust you more. They start to reveal things to you. That's what God will do for you. The closer you get to it, you talk to it, get closer, He'll reveal stuff to you. He'll start showing you things. Go with me now to 1 Thessalonians. You shouldn't have to flip very far. It's right there close. Chapter 5 and verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16. It should be just a few pages over in the next book. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always. Be rejoiceful. Be thankful for it. I read a thing this week. It's, it's in the brown book that we got from Mike. If you're following it, one of the things this week it was talking about some of this. And it said to even rejoice in hard times. And you're like, preacher, how can you tell me? How can you stand up here and tell me when I'm having a tough time when things are going wrong in my life to rejoice? And what this says, if you've read it, is in these hard times is when you're really going to grow stronger. You're going to grow stronger in God in these hard times. Thank you putting that on you and then pray for the help. Pray for it. Talk to God. If you try to go through this hard time without talking to somebody, it gets really hard. If you've ever had a hard something going on in your life that you tried to hold in, you didn't want to talk to nobody, you didn't want to talk to your spouse, your best friend, it just seemed like there was nobody that you could talk to. You try to hold it in and then it finally explodes and it hurts you more. God's there. All He wants you to do is talk with it. Put it out there. You can't. Don't hold it in. Don't hold it back. Talk with it. You don't got to worry about him telling nobody else. You don't got to worry about nothing but just talk to God. Rejoice in these hard times. How can I do that? Well, it's because you're going to learn. You're going to grow closer to God. That's an opportunity for you to grow closer to God. To talk to God when you're having these hard times. And everything, give thanks. Thank Him for it. Everything He does for you in your life, He's doing to grow you, to grow that relationship with you. Sometimes a good thing in a relationship, sometimes is if you're apart for a while. And you're like, God, why have we been Stephanie the whole month of February? Why did you got to be gone so long? But you grow closer that way. Sometimes thank God for these things He's putting on you because that's how you grow never had trouble. I've said it before. Most of us would forget to talk to God. If we didn't have something going on in our life, we wouldn't talk to God. Thank you for it. But take it to it. When you're growing that relationship with God, we, we, we talk about that. Communication. you got to talk to Him to get close to Him. There's something else that you can do that will help you to grow closer to God. The second thing we need to do is to read and study God's Word. These are His thoughts. Everything in God's Word was written, inspired by God. It's God's words. Study them and learn them. Understand them. Matthew chapter 4 tells us when Jesus was being tempted by Satan, He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's this right here, folks. This is every word. This is the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He'll tell you how to live. He'll tell you what to do. You read and study God's word and you'll get closer to God because you'll start to understand what He wants you to do, how He wants you to act, how He wants you to treat other people. Get to know what he wants and you can grow closer to him. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. There again, it's not far over. Maybe this will be the last time we move. It's according to what God's will is. But in Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, he tells us all scripture is given. By the inspiration of God, it is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You're having trouble with God, you're having trouble, go to the Word of God. You need to know what to do. There's nothing that the Word of God don't cover. You got something going on in your life, go to the Word of God. You need to know what to do about a situation. Communicate with God and go to His Word. It'll tell you what you need to know. It's good. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. When you got something going on wrong in your life, 
Go to the Word of God. Something's bringing you down. You felt real bad. Go get your Bible and start reading it. Before long, you'll start to feel better. The Word of God will start calming you. You'll start getting that calming feeling about it. And it usually with me, when you get in the Word of God and you just start reading and you find what's going on in your life, God will lead you there. It starts coming and then you'll start communicating again, talking to God. Thank you for leading me to the Scripture. Study God's Word. Get in God's Word. It's also good for instruction in righteousness. A lot of times I've heard new new Christians they get saved and they're like they really don't know what's right and what's wrong. They don't know. It's all in here. It's all in the Word of God. You study the Word of God and He'll lead you where He needs you to go where you need to be. A lot of times if, you, if you're talking with a new Christian and I've had them come to me here and they're like, okay, AJ, I, I, I've, I've given my heart to God and, and I tell them, you know, about building a relationship, talking to God, and they're like, I want to start reading in my Bible, but where do I start? And I've often thought to myself, just there again, we take things for granted. Where do I start? If you're here today, you're a new Christian, or you know someone that is that don't know where to start, number one, don't, don't. The Bible tells us you've got to start on milk, just like a new baby. They're a new baby in Christ. You can't put them right in the Old Testament and let them start tell them to start reading about Moses and Jeremiah and all these prophets. That's hard to understand, especially when you're a new believer. Where do I start? Start right at the first. Pick one of the Gospels out. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and start reading it. These are the books that will tell you about Jesus' birth and about Him being here on earth and what He did and where He went. And most of them end with where he died on the cross for our sins and was resurrected. That's a good place to start. If you start there, God will lead you where he needs you. But today, what today's message is really for is more for us people that have been Christians a while to help these new believers. Because a lot of times someone gets saved, they become, they come to Christ and they get lost. They get not they they get lost in the shuffle because they don't know where to go. They don't know where to start reading. They don't know how to build this relationship with God. It's our place to let them know how to do it, where to go. Start by reading in one of the Gospels. Don't, don't try to read the hard parts first. I've actually had some of them tell me, oh, I just got saved, I started reading my Bible, I figured I'd just start right there in Genesis and start reading. That's some hard stuff to take when you're a baby in Christ. When you're young, tell them no. Go learn about Jesus. Learn about what Christ did for you. And all through there, He'll tell you what you got to do to build that relationship, talking to God, how to treat other people, things to do. Also, in this right here will help even been a Christian in a while, and especially new Christians. They want to know where to start. Well, look, on Sunday when the preacher, whether it's me or somebody else, or Wednesday when you hear the Word of God, write down the Scripture. Or mark it in your Bible where He tells you to go to. Mark 2 Timothy down. Mark 1 Thessalonians down. And sometime through the week, that's a good place to go. Go to that Scripture and read it and get you a Bible that has references that will tell you somewhere to go that will work with it. Run these references and read it and get into it and then try to figure out how can I apply this to my life? How can I apply prayer better to my life? How can I apply studying God's Word better to my life? Don't just do it on Sunday. Coming to church on Sunday is great. Praise God you're here this morning. But don't stop when you leave the church house today. Don't let that be all of it. Just because AJ read it to you. Go back. Read it again. When you got that quiet time. When you're in your quiet place. When you're communicating with God. Get your Bible out and say, I'm going to look at this 2 Timothy thing that AJ told me about. 
Yet it says that. Well, I got a reference here that tells me to go somewhere else. Well, I'm going to look that up and see where it tells me to go. Well, mine, it, 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 it tells me to go to chapter 2, 21, or Romans 5, or 15, 4. Go to some of these other places. Start studying God's Word. As you learn more of God's Word, you'll get closer to it. You don't have no choice. As you study God's Word, you'll get closer. It will bring you in. It will calm you. As you study God's Word, figure out how not only you can apply it to your life, but also, how can I use this Scripture to help a new beginner? Especially if there's someone that you know that has recently turned their heart over to God. Don't leave them hanging there. When you see them, talk with them, make it a point to call them up one day that week. How's your week going? Because I'm here to tell you, if you remember the day that you come to know the Lord, accepted Christ in your life, that was one of the hardest weeks I ever went through. I don't know about y'all, but Satan, he wants you back. And he knows that's when you're the most vulnerable. Take the time, if you know someone that's given their heart to Christ, take the time that week to call them up and say, hey, how are you doing? How are you studying? Going? Have you been talking to God? They might need you. No, because I don't know how. Can you teach me? Yeah, I can teach you. Tell them what Jesus said. Go into your quiet place and just have a conversation with him. If nothing else, recite the Lord's Prayer. Being from the South, I took it for granted everybody knows the Lord's Prayer. No, not everybody does. Not everybody's heard. Tell them that's where it is, Matthew. Look it up for them and tell them where it is. And say it with them. Pray it with them that first time. Pray it with them. Teach them how. Just like newborn babies, you know, if we don't talk to them, they'll never learn to talk. When they get big enough, we like to hold them on their legs and let them hold our fingers. And we guide them and teach them that the next thing we know, they're walking on their own. Those new beginners, if someone don't show them how to pray, if someone don't teach them how to read the Bible, what to read, where to look, teach them that it's in here, they don't know. That's our job, folks, as Christians. As Christian people, that's our job to teach these people. As parents, it's our job to teach our little ones how to do things. As Christians, it's our job to teach them how to pray. Teach them how to study God's Word. But if you don't know, you can't teach them. I'm telling you, each week, go. Just because I read it to you up here and you read a couple of verses, go back. Run your references on that. Read it in your quiet place. Read it to yourself. Study it. And then, how can I apply this to my life? How can I use it to grow a better relationship so I can teach someone else to have a better relationship? get closer to God. You know, a lot of our youth, teenagers coming up, they learn what they know about relationships from watching mom and dad. They're watching someone in their life that has a relationship. And that's how they learn how to act in a relationship. Well, us as Christian people, that's how we teach those new Christians how to be better Christians by the way we act around them, by the way we treat them by helping them, and then they'll learn to help others. The way we act, the way we carry ourselves, and the way we do, that's the way they're going to do. If they see us come to church on Sunday, and then they see us on Tuesday, and we're carrying on something awful, and talking about people behind their back, and putting people down, that new believer's just going to think, hey, it's okay to do that. In order for them to build a good relationship, we have to show them how. They don't automatically know. We have to teach them to study God's Word. That's why Bible study is so important. If you know someone that's a new convert, just turn their life over to Christ. Encourage them to go to a Bible study. If it's not here on Wednesday night, find one somewhere to go to. Find a group of people that has a Bible study and get in with them. Help them. If they don't know somebody that has a Bible study, you know, I, I just can't do it on Wednesday nights or somebody that does something on Tuesday nights. Help them try to find somebody. If you don't know, you know, help them try to find somebody that does. 
lead them. It's a, that's our job as Christian people. is to teach them how to study the Word. To teach them how to have that relationship. Lead by example. I'm fixing to close in a word of prayer. If you're here today and you don't have Christ in your life, you want to say a prayer. Come to know the Lord right where you sit. You don't have to move. But if you want to, come down to the front. Have a seat on the front. Kneel at the front. Somebody be here to pray for you. Accept Christ in your life. If you're here, you just got something on your heart. Bring it to Christ. Bring it to God. You want to be better? You have someone that you know. It needs to know how to pray. They need to know how to build that relationship. They need to know how to study the Bible. Come down. Someone will come pray with you. Bring it to God. Pray for that strength. Whatever it is you need in your life, communicate with God. You don't have to come down here to do it. But take the time to talk to God and communicate with Him. Just because you've given your life to God, I've been a Christian for all these years. Don't think you don't still need to talk to God. One of the main reasons relationships tear apart is over communication. A lot of times you can find people that's been married for 30 years and have split up, and you get talking to them, and a lot of times they pay out of just communicate, communicate, communicate. If you're here and you need to talk to God, talk to God. Bring it to Him. There'll be someone to come down here and pray with you. I read in here where it said, He'll pray for us, pray for one another. If you don't have anything to pray for in your life, pray for the preacher. I can always use it. Pray for it. Through the week when you're praying, put my name in there. Lord, show AJ his message for this week. Help him with his message for this week. Show him the scripture he needs. Pray for our elders. Lord, be with our elders this week. They, they're having this time. They've got these decisions to make. We've got this going on at the church. We've got events coming up. Pray for our team leaders. We've got events coming up. We've got things. They had to move donkey pen this week. You know, we've had to move rodeos. We had one we were going to try to do, but the youth were going to be, we had to move these things. Pray for our team leaders. Pray for them. Our lay pastors. Pray for them. Lift them up in prayer. There's always lift them up. We got vacancies in some of our teams. Be praying for those teams. Pray for the church. Lord, that, that the right person would lay it on their heart to step up to be the leader of these teams that we got vacant. Talk to God. If enough people start talking to God, He'll start hearing. You'll be like, hey, I'm fixing to put a leader in that position. I'm fixing to move. And you start talking to God. Talk to me. Dear Heavenly Father, as I come to you this morning, Lord, I just thank you so much for all you do for me. Lord, I just pray, God, for that closer relationship with you, that you just have me, God, in my everyday life, to be the Christian that I should be. People will see me in my life. God, just help me to build that relationship with you. Dear Lord, I pray for every person here today. God, that you would just help them to understand and grow in your word, in your spirit, and in their understanding. God, right now, I pray that the Holy Spirit just come in, Lord, and touch every heart here today. If there is a need here today, that they'll just bring it to you. Lord, right now, I pray that there's one here that don't know you. Oh, you right now.